Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. I am Van, and we are all the LFR family. Much love to you all. Thank you so much for clicking play. Hopefully, you click the like button as well. All right, so let's go and check this joint out, guys. Let me see here. Boom. Evening, I'm outside the Christ the Good Shepherd Church in Wakeley, which is the scene of a second mass stabbing event in Sydney. This church and grounds are now a crime scene after a man approached a clergyman mid-sermon and stabbed him multiple times whilst it was being live streamed. We can't show you much of the very confronting video, but I can tell you many members of the congregation leapt to the defence of the bishop and in doing so sustained multiple wounds. Police have arrested the attacker whilst eight ambulances are currently treating the wounded. It is an incredibly chaotic scene here, with many members of the community outraged and crowding the streets. Ambulances were called at 7.15pm and have just begun transporting the clergyman to Liverpool Hospital with multiple stab wounds. We're still awaiting an official condition from paramedics. They're also treating a man in his 30s with multiple stab wounds, a man in his 20s. Sloan, Kelly, thank you very much for joining us. Look, this latest horrific attack just an hour and a half ago, it was broadcast live. It has shocked the Fairfield community. And of course, it comes after just two days after six people were killed in the stabbing at Bono Junction. It's incredibly confronting, Shari. I was due to come in here and talk to you about the, the impacts of the weekend stabbing on my community in Vaucluse, which people are still coming to terms with. Um, a contact on the ground sent me that video. I looked at it and I have to say I wish I hadn't. Um, if you are watching tonight and your children are in the house, can you please go and check because this vision is going everywhere and kids should not see it, especially given the events we've seen in the last few days. But, you know, Shari, it is a, you know, it is a confronting situation. It's they a very volatile go nuts situation. Out there. I can only agree Pissed with the and call for calm at the moment. Police are trying to do their job. Uh, it doesn't help for more people to turn up at that site. Um, mm. We just need to return to calm. Well, just as you say that, um, I've, I've checked my phone and a police contact has texted me saying that a riot is occurring. So a riot occurring. This is why on air tonight we've had the mayor, Frank Carboni, and the deputy mayor, uh, Charbel Saliba, call for calm. You're repeating that call now because there is now a riot. People are so angry, that, understandably so, that uh, their local church leader has been stabbed in this horrific way. He is still alive. He's been taken by ambulance to Liverpool Hospital. He is being treated. Another four people are being treated at the scene. But but Kelly Sloan, we are hearing reports now that there is a riot forming. It's incredibly disturbing. I mean, you know, this city at the moment is, um, it's a tinderbox. People are very vulnerable at the moment. Um, there are inflamed tensions and this is a stabbing of a very highly esteemed church leader, someone who has a huge social media following, a great following in Fairfield. Um, and for this to happen, there is an emotional response happening from this community at the moment. And I, you know, I concur with leaders in that area that there um, should be calm now. People should not be turning up. People should be letting the police do their job. We cannot let our police also end up under attack as they have been tonight as well. Yeah. Now, the church leader, as you said, very popular, Bishop Ma Mari Emanuel, he gained prominence during... Let me tell you something. Charlie, you are spot on. They said he, would, um, he got stabbed in a horrific way. Let me tell you something. Getting stabbed in any type of way is getting stabbed. We have been teaching people how to grow online. It's been absolutely amazing. We have three people who have been able to reach monetization in less than 30 days. Growing YouTube channels, some from zero people. We have one guy who had two subscribers before he started working with me. He started helping him. His views went up. 4.8 eight million percent we're super excited if anybody ever want to grow on youtube you reach out to me with the word coach i do not want to get stabbed and i carry around a dag on knife everywhere i go everywhere i go bro everywhere i go i always got a blade on me i don't care i don't care and and i'm about to be walking around with you no know I mean that that thing on me you know what i mean that thing on me it's just the all of the rules are changing so much that you know, if you're in certain zones, you know what I mean? You can be a ch you can be charged for it. Nope. I ain't trying to be charged for it, bro. It's like you can carry it out the house and lock it in your glove box and it can't be 
locked away in the same place where the ammo is. And then when you when you got it on your person, you can't have it in the school zones near certain near certain businesses that that's it's just so many daggone rules in Washington, DC and Maryland. It's like you'll be in one, you'll be in one state that allows it, and you gotta cross another state that doesn't allow it to go to another state that does allow it. It's just a whole lot going on, man. But y'all got to protect yourselves and, and make sure y'all are on point. Because from my understanding, this, I don't know if you would call him a preacher or a pastor, or I don't know what you would call the guy that got stabbed, but apparently he preached a whole lot about nonviolence. He, he preached a lot about just about doing things God's way. And I also hear that he was a huge fan um, or supporter of Donald Trump as well. So that's, that should be noted. During the era, um, he spoke out against the lockdowns. He said that people were tr being treated like an animals. The Daily Telegraph reports See? that his Facebook group alone yeah. has 290,000 followers. So we don't even know how many people were watching the live stream when the violence broke out. We don't know the motive yet. This just happened at 7.15 this evening, just an hour and a half ago. For anyone who's just tuning in, a very popular bishop, Bishop Ma Murray Emanuel, was brutally stabbed, repeatedly stabbed, including to his face and head and body, while he was delivering a service to his congregation. Just this See, that's the part that I don't understand because I keep on hearing other reports about whether or not the, the blade was actually open when he was trying to uh, attempt to stab him. But now I'm hearing that he was actually stabbed. He was stabbed in the body, he was stabbed in the face. And there was like three other men that were stabbed trying to... I guess, get the knife out of the hand of the assailant while they was trying to whoop his ass inside of the church, you know, get him up off of their pastor. They got stabbed too, but they ended up taking him down. I don't know if they stabbed him, but he wouldn't have walked out of that bad boy if it were, if it were me. If if that was my pastor, you come up in there trying to dag on. I would have been like, Peter, I would have cut your ear off, Jack. That's what I would have done. I would cut your whole dag on ear off. It's at 7.15. Um, Kelly, I think one of the things we need to speak about, and, and maybe there's some advice for people, you know, I know in the eastern suburbs community, everyone's been feeling terrified, very anxious, very upset after the stabbings on Saturday evening. A shopping centre that was meant to be a safe place, um, it, you know, it is now going to become a shrine. We're now seeing the same thing. People should feel safe going to church. Instead, a bishop has been brutally, repeatedly stabbed. Another four people, because the congregants, you can see in the vision, get up to try and help him. So at least another four people were also stabbed. They're, they're alive, but they were injured. They're now being treated by paramedics. But, you know, it is this terror when people should feel safe going to the shops. They should feel safe going to church. And, and that's where these, these attacks have happened. Shari, it's just so confronting. I can't tell you. It's it's been a you know it's been a really tough few days um, for Sydney, um, for New South Wales, and for our country, seeing the devastating attacks that happened on Saturday. Um, today, you know, the pain is still being felt in the eastern suburbs very deeply. People are very distressed, and tonight, if they're watching their TVs. This will be quite triggering for them. Um, you know, I, I rang home just before I came on air with you to tell um, my child to turn off his phone. And I, I would encourage everyone else to do the same. Um, I saw this vision and I thought, what is happening to this city of ours, this beautiful city of ours? Um, so, you know... And, and we, Kelly, we... J just before you go, I understand your son was actually at Bondi Junction when this unfolded. Yeah, he's older. The one that I rang to tell him to get off was the younger one. That the middle one was in in Bondi Junction when this happened. But he is fine. Um, but so many more people are not fine. So many people are not doing okay. You know, we are a city that is grieving at the moment. And in the middle of that grief, we are seeing this unfold in Western Sydney. It is so disturbing. And I just, you know, I can only repeat that we need calm. We need mm. police to be able to do their job. And, um, it, you know, I just, I'm lost for words tonight. They need police to do their job. So basically what they're saying is police are doing their job, right? They wasn't at the, at the church service. I mean, they, 
yeah, I don't carry guns, I guess, because you're not getting all that much crime out there. Probably are. Don't know. Well, if somebody would have had a gun on their hip protecting that pastor, then it probably wouldn't have went that far. But eh, then y'all would have been talking about somebody shot and got shot and killed inside of a, a church or synagogue. And that probably would have caused more issues. But it's always going to be something, man. Thoughts and prayers to the pastor, Mari Mari. That, that might not be the correct term for this gentleman. Pastor, bishop, not sure, but thoughts and prayers to him. We hope that he has a full recovery and that he gets back to doing God's business, which is preaching his word and making sure that people understand that God is king and we can't change things by simply being violent and doing whatever the hell we want to do like that other dude did. Let me tell you something. If I worked with that pastor, if I protected that pastor, was one of his deacons or even just attended the church, that dude would have had a hell of a way. Like, that would have been a mission for that brother. All right, y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that sub button, make sure you do so on your way out the door. We got a whole bunch of videos, playlists. Y'all go check them out, all right? And if you're looking to be trained up in these YouTube streets and taught a couple of things, reach out to me and let me see how it goes down. Shout out to everybody that we've been working with. We've been seeing some amazing numbers, bruh. It's, it's almost I don't even want to I don't even want to talk about their numbers, really, because it will sound like I'm bragging. I'm not. I'm just extremely happy for them. I'm extremely happy for everybody that reached out to me. And now they are being coached by me. And I'm just showing them a couple of things and they are getting some amazing results. So shout out to all of you guys. Y'all are killing it. And I look forward to working with more people as well.